Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just grateful for this day you've given us, Lord God, and for all the beauties and wonders, Lord. We just give you praise and glory. Lord, we just ask you to have your Holy Spirit here to teach us and guide us in your word. To open our hearts, Lord God, to be receptive to the truth uh, that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm going to dive right into a scripture. <laughs> Psalms, chapter 78. I'm going to start at verse 38. But he, and we're speaking of God there, but he being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. A scripture that is true for all of us. We are but flesh. God knows how He made us. He made us flesh. And Scripture tells us all through that our flesh is weak, that our flesh um, gravitates towards selfishness and sin. Scripture tells us how our flesh gets us into so much trouble. And if we're wise and if we're self-reflective, we see that it's true in our lives, that our flesh... Our flesh. But God is full of compassion. Yes. He cares. Yes. He knows. He made us. He made us flesh. It's not that He wants us to sin. No, that's not what He wants. But He knows that we will. Because He made us. Yes. He could have made us perfect. But then, even though we're weak, even though we stumble, even though we fall, even though we're not, we do wrong, even though the world knows that even the, the best of them, the things that most of themselves know in their hearts that they do wrong, we just, we just know this. What if, and, and we don't give God credit for our salvation, what if, God had made us perfect, would we then assume we don't need Him? Because we, He already made us perfect, would we claim our perfection for ourselves? Probably. Yes, yeah. we would. And then, and then thus doing so, we would be imperfect. God made us weak, not because He couldn't make us strong. He made the angels he made them holy and righteous from the moment of their creation and gave them a choice to follow Him or not. And we see that some fell. We see that Satan himself fell. Uh, made, made perfect and holy in His presence, in the full presence of God, and He chose to fall. And take with Him a third of the angels, the Scripture would tell us. And so He made us the way we are. He made us knowing we would fail. He made us knowing we were weak. But He still loves us because that's the way He made us. Now, we, we, I'm not saying that we, don't, we should not take accountability for our failings. Not at all. Scripture doesn't say that. Right. We should take accountability for our failings because we're the ones that choose. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that choose to follow our flesh. We're the ones that choose to sin. We're the ones that choose to, to do the selfish and greedy things in life. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that choose wrath. We choose strife. We choose turmoil. We choose mm -hmm. hurting others. We make these choices to fall away from God and such. And, and, and God didn't make us perfect, but we still cannot blame Him for our sin. Don't go down that route, because He is holy. But what He wants, and without His compassion, we would be lost. Without His mercy, we would never make it. What He wants is a people that knows they need Him. He wants a people that know they need Him every day. Yeah. Amen. Yes. They, he wants a people that know their very existence is dependent upon the Almighty God in heaven. And so He has compassion. And He has patience. He forgives our iniquity. 
And he doesn't destroy us. Oh, but he could. The moment we sin, the moment we sin, we deserve separation from him for eternity. But he has compassion. He doesn't destroy us. I wonder how many times he was angry with me and turned away from that anger. Mm. Having patience. Allowing me to continue on in his grace. How many times has he done that for me? Hopefully not as many times as I think, but probably more than I can imagine. <laughs> probably a lot. <laughs> okay. You don't need any comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that, that's the way that's the way it is with us though, right? We, yes. we 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 know we've made God angry, we know we've let him down, we know we've sinned, and and uh uh without his compassion, he would never turn away from that that anger. We'd be lost. And he doesn't stir up all his wrath. Because he hates sin. He hates sin. But he loves us. And sin is sin seems to be something that we struggle with. We struggled with it greatly when we were unsaved. Once we got saved, we still struggle with it. Uh, you know, hopefully less as we grow stronger in our walk and relationship with Christ, but we struggle with it. But sin is not an eternal thing. Not for his not for his people. Not for those that are going to spend eternity with him. I mean, I, I've I've been to the place where I just prayed, God, why did why why don't you just why did you make me this way? To walk you? <laughs> you know, why why did yeah. you why? I don't understand. Yeah. You don't want me to do this, but yet I want to. Can't you just take that away? Right. But that's you know, but that's that's part of the battle. Right. The, the the battle of the of the heart wanting to please God. Mm -hmm. That's that shows him you love him, that you care. That your flesh is trying to pull a different direction. That's a heart that loves him, that that is in turmoil about that. That wants to please him. Know that so many times he's failed, but yet wants to plug on and, and has these conversations with God. This is why can't you just take this away so I don't want to do this anymore? Can't you just, you know, this weakness that I have? You know, but sometimes it's our weakness from where we build our strength and, and get our trust and faith and hope from because right. He has compassion. We serve a compassionate God mm -hmm. who is perfectly compassionate while being perfectly holy and, and, and perfectly passes out judgment. And I'm just grateful that there's so much compassion. Yes. Human compassion can be flawed. It can, it can be too weak when it should be strong. It can be too strong when it should, could be weak. That's the way we are. We're imperfect, but God's is always right. It goes on in verse 39 of Psalms. It says, For remember that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. We are such a short time on this planet. Yes. A short time. And He loves us. And He gave us this little short time. You ever wonder, we get to spend eternity with him. Oh, why do we only live like, you know, 80 years or 100 maybe if we're really healthy or we eat a lot of yogurt and live in a foreign country, maybe we live to be 120. Right. You know? well, well, why did God make us that way when we have the whole eternity to spend with him? You know, it's, it, it, isn't that fast? I ask these silly questions, but think about it. Why didn't he make us hang out here for a couple thousand years each to get it get it right? Then take us to heaven for untold in millennium, right? But no, just a very very short time that, that we're here because he loves us. Because he loves us, he's got something better for us. You know, he's got something greater for us. I'm torn between what I know and the happiness I can know here and the happiness I can't comprehend in heaven. You know, that's the way he made us to be torn between those. He made us to 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 find in, in, in loving him on earth, to find happiness and joy that, that makes us not want to leave our loved ones and not want to leave the beauty of this planet 
knowing that he's got something greater for us, but we can't comprehend it. I can't comprehend what's greater than uh, when, when, when I'm sitting in my office working and I hear the little papa coming up the stairs, papa. And, and he sticks his head around the corner, papa. <laughs> and, and, and you know what joy that is how, how can how can yeah. heaven be better than that moment yeah. you know yeah. and he sees me a big smile and he just takes off running and you know dragging a giant blanket that's too heavy for him and he's dragging his blanket and, running, and you know and he wants to sit in my lap for a while and uh, work on my keyboard um you know how can how can how can yeah. heaven be better than that moment you know, but it is. Yeah. But he gives us these moments in life so that we can enjoy this little bitty teeny life that we have, mm -hmm. and uh, he has so much more for us. And uh, through his compassion, through his mercy, his love, his grace, all the attributes that make him perfect and holy, or that are of being a condition of him being perfect and holy, is a better way of saying it, are wonderful. I want to move on to Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's of His mercies that we are not consumed. That applies to every one of us. Because His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I am glad that every morning His compassions are renewed. Amen. Yes. <laughs> that every day he, he, he still has compassion. And it's not weakened, it's not lesser. You know, uh, God never said, you know, doesn't, you can't get on his last nerve. You know, you know that saying, you're on my last nerve. You've tested me every day for the past week. Now you're on my last nerve. Well, there comes a time when God does bring about correction, does bring about judgment in these sorts of things. But fortunately, his last nerve is not so easy to find as Tracy's is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the guy has got the mic has, you better be watching. The guy has the mic has control. Um, <laughs> for, for, for 45 minutes, give me that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For he remembers. So, so it's renewed. His compassion. Every morning, I can get up and know, and I can I can say in my heart, I know you have compassion. I can love. But see, he wants salvation is a state of the heart in wanting to please him, and God will have eternal compassion on the heart that wants to please him. Amen. No matter the struggle. No matter the struggle. Now, salvation isn't a state of, did you say the right words? Did you get the right baptism? Did you go to the right church? Did you do enough uh, extracurricular activities for the church? Did you give enough to community and blah? That's not salvation. Salvation is a state of the heart. A state of a relationship between you and Christ. You have a, a heart that wants to please Him. And His mercy is, is just unending for the heart that wants to please Him. Great is Thy faithfulness. He is faithful to the end. His Word is faithful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it teaches us about His grace, about His mercy, about His love, and about His judgment. Somehow, the world believes that a God of love, because God is love, all love comes from Him. There's no such thing as love that did not come from Him. Because without Him, there would be no love. Right. You remove God, you have no love. Right. If you want to know what that's like, well, hell will be like that. Yeah. I suggest you not go for a visit. Mm -hmm. um, but... We have access to that love daily through His mercy, through His compassion, through His grace. And He wants that heart to long for that. A heart that longs for that daily is a heart that's 
on the path to knowing Jesus better. And while we're growing in that relationship with Jesus, His compassion, His patience is great. He knows the difference between the person who says all the right things and has, has a heart of stone, has a heart that doesn't love Him. He, God knows the difference. He knows the people sitting in church pews today all over the planet or wherever, in whatever time zone they're in, when they're in there, some of them are sleeping. But still then, He knows those hearts. Right. Right. He knows those hearts. And He knows the hearts that are there because they, well, it's good business practice. I knew a guy who was kind of into politics. He joined a particular church because he thought he could get more votes. Oh. <coughs> Something missing. In that heart, isn't there? Yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, or a guy that, or someone who goes to church somewhere because, well, that's where their friends go, and he wants to hang out with his friends, but he doesn't mm -hmm. care one lick about Jesus as long as he can hang out with his buddies. He God knows the difference in these hearts that truly love him, and those that are just yes. going through motions, that have just joined clubs mm -hmm. that are called church. Mm -hmm. In Second Corinthians uh, chapter one. Scripture tells us there, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in, in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Mm -hmm. Comfort. Comfort is part of that compassion of God. A compassionate person provides comfort. You're not really compassionate if the recipient of your compassion feels or gains nothing. Mm -hmm. That's false compassion. Oh, and walk away. <laughs> There's no compassion in the tone of your awe <laughs> that is of any help. Compassion provides comfort. Mm -hmm. Compassion is something that the, that, that the individual feels in their heart and their soul. It's not a mockery. It's, it's not a shallow, hollow thing. It's something they feel. Aren't you glad that the compassion of God is something you feel? Now, when it comes to our relationships with Christ, our, our feelings are, are difficult because they're often wrong. And we must rely on the Word of God. But our, our uh, experiences with God are part of our evidence for trusting and believing in Him. Mm -hmm. And all Christians have felt the comfort of God. It was real. It was real. His compassion is real. Mm -hmm. He is the God of mercies and the God of all comfort. And so as His children, should not we be full of mercy? And have comfort that's real. Mm -hmm. To comfort in our tribulation, in our troubles and trials, where we can just collapse into His arms. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there before when it seems like everything's going so wrong at the moment in a situation? All you can do is just talk to Him and just collapse. Mm -hmm. You just want to just cur curl up in your bed, in your lounge chair, in a corner, in a dark room, under a tree. And just forget the world exists because you can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's when God comforts. And he, and he begins to heal and, and strengthen and pull together within you. And you can get up from that place. Mm -hmm. Where maybe part of it was you feeling sorry for yourself. Weak. Despondent. Overwhelmed and gain strength in those times. That's the comfort of God. That's compassion. Real compassion is felt and becomes comforting and strengthening. And that's the compassion of our God who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble. God is compassionate upon us giving us comfort in our troubles and trials so that we can be a reflection of Him to others in their times of trial and be a comfort. 
See, compassion without comfort is really not going to help anybody. And God always provides comfort with His mm -hmm. compassion. Mm -hmm. yes. So, provide your compassion and comfort to others as God has provided, can, uh, provided it for you. In Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15, For thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also this is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. To revive the spirit of the humble. God, God loves a humble heart because it's a heart He can work with. A prideful heart gives himself credit for the things of God. A prideful heart declares himself wealthy because of his own intellect, because of his own business prowess. Uh, a prideful heart considers him uh, intellectually sound and, and of great knowledge because of his hard work and his study. Not that God gave him the mind that he gave him. A prideful heart uh, looks as at his ability to, uh, uh, you know, and strength, physical strength and prowess and says, this is me, this is my hard work and giving God no credit. But the contrite heart, the humble heart, realizes that God could have chosen so many different things for you. God could have chosen to give you a lesser mind. God could have chosen to give you a, a body crippled from birth. God could have chosen to make your heart weak physically. God could have chosen differently to make you a pauper. And the rich think, well, I could become a billionaire no matter where I'm from. Says the guy born to billionaire parents. Whose <laughs> 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 family in the 70s gave him a million dollars, which is worth hundreds of millions of dollars a day to go out and invest. I could have done this myself. Well, back in the 70s, you were making about 25 an hour trying to save a million dollars in to go invest. Yeah. Uh, not that a person can be self-made, but that they are using all the skills that God gave them. Yes. And not that the not that the person with great physical power can become stronger and faster, but they're building upon that which that God gave them. And they're not surpassing the ability God gave them. We never surpass the ability. We never get to the point where I am so strong now, it's beyond what God even expected. So this, I own this. No. It's not like, oh, I am so intelligent, so smart, I know so much, even beyond what God thought I would ever know. No. Mm -hmm. You've probably still fallen short of what God knows you can actually accomplish in every case. Yeah. The humble heart knows this and thanks God for all things. And is humble. And, and um, sometimes it's hard for the, those that are successful be humble. We see God though takes that contrite, that humble heart, that humble spirit and He revives it and strengthens it within Him. Giving us uh, the same joy, a better joy, a permanent joy in our humbleness. That that the, the person who tries to take credit for everything they've done themselves only wishes they could. They're trying to build themselves up to feel better, to feel joy, to feel happiness in what they've accomplished, to feel successful in what they accomplished. They're seeking, they're seeking for that place where they feel good about it all. And they keep piling on the praise for themselves. Keep piling on the pride. If I had more pride, not even knowing what they're doing, they're seeking something. They're seeking approval from themselves, from parents, from the world, in their pride. And all along, God says, the contrite, humble heart that knows I've done everything, given everything, and you're building on only what I've given you, I will rebuild 
and give to them what this person is trying to achieve on their own. I will give to them that feeling of accomplishment. I will give to them that feeling of purpose. I will give to them that feeling of joy of being a valuable part of society, a part of my family, and a part of what I do because I do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And if I do it unto God, if I do it under Him, it's, it's treasures in heaven. I, that's the person, the humble person God builds upon and gives everything to that the prideful man is trying to build himself. He revives the heart of the contrite. He builds upon the heart of the humble. And we can find great joy in knowing that we have a God that supplies all of our needs, that does all things for us, that's given us everything we've got, and it's far more than we could ever accomplish on our own. And the person over here who may be wealthy beyond compare, who may be successful in ways we never know, is still longing to feel what we feel when we've given our heart to Christ and we've allowed Him to be our value. And we don't even know it because we don't know how they feel. We know the cars they drive. We know the yachts they drive. You know they sail around in. Bezos is really not. He's really upset because they won't take a bridge down so he can get his yacht through. Where was that? I don't remember. I read it. Right. He wanted to take his yacht somewhere, and they want. He wanted to dismantle a bridge so he could get it through. What trouble? What turmoil he must be in, knowing he can't get his yacht through that. You know, and that town refuses to let him take down that that historic bridge so he can get it through there. But I'm Bezos. I'm the richest man in the world. Could buy your old town. Yeah, we ain't getting through our bridge. <laughs> it's small and boat. <laughs> it's small. You know, yeah. fortunately we don't have those struggles. Aren't you happy? <laughs> that, that, that your your flat bottom John boat with the old burnout electric motor can go just about anywhere. Yeah. Fit under any bridge. Yeah. There you go. But you see, God, we don't know how they feel, so we don't know what they're missing is what God's given us right. when we trust and believe in Him. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, for when, so, when we, so when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. It's through His blood that He takes the, the humble heart that longs for Him, that seeks Him, that wants Him to be their Lord and Savior. And He gives us the things that the world thinks they're trying to build on their own. They don't... We can't really understand each other. We're over here, hopefully, God giving us this comfort, this peace, this taking our hearts and remolding them and giving us that feeling of accomplishment within Him. Hopefully we're over here being built up as we grow in our relationship with Him. We don't know what it feels like to be over here right now at this moment, hopefully. Don't, don't try to live in both towers. Don't try to live on both sides. If you try to live over here, getting your value from the things that you think you are and the things you can accomplish, because you're wonderful, you're going to miss out on the joys of this side. Not that we don't, not that we should count to accomplish less, but we accomplish it for Christ. We accomplish it within His will, within His mercy, within His. Glory with His power. We accomplish these things as God would have us to do so. And we gain everything that they think they're gaining by amassing more wealth, more, more fame. Don't try to live in both towers. Don't try to be both. Because always, this side with Christ will get stifled. And you will only achieve some limited amount over here. 
where no amount of money really makes you feel better, truly. Maybe stand. <coughs> Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, if you uh, got something from this message, take home a one little tidbit that you can think upon this week, meditate upon, study out. Um, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for your love and your mercies. Your compassion, Lord, that you, that you show us daily. Uh, Lord God, we just give you praise that you uh, the long suffering you have for us Lord and our troubles and our trials and our our missteps and our failings Lord that you're always there to pick us up and carry us back Lord God we just pray Lord today that uh, you would just solidify us in our walk with you Lord God that you would strengthen us in our walk with you that when you would give us hearts and minds a desire to please you Lord so we can go down that path of of growth within you, Lord. For those that are out today, uh, perhaps sick, staying away, staying out of the heat, Lord God, we lift them up in prayer and just pray for their happiness and their joy. Uh, give them a moment to, to to talk to you today. Just put yourself upon their heart, Lord, so that they will they will feel your presence, Lord. Uh, for those that are sick, we just lift them up in prayer, Lord God. We're just grateful for this uh, this town that you've given us to live in. This. Uh, a uh, small corner of the world in Idaho, Lord God, where we can be free to praise and worship you. Free to love you, Lord God. We just we just thank you for that, Lord. Uh, be with each of us throughout our week. Uh, hedges of protection about us and our home, Lord. Uh, just let us uh, uh, just let us be ambassadors to the world, showing your compassion and your love for us to them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.